Hello everybody, I'm out here in the field now. I'm gonna be capturing these images of the lunar eclipse. If the clouds stay clear, you can see it's a little bit dark. I wanna walk you guys through a few of the things that I think about when I'm finding a spot to pick it out uh, or to pick out the spot where I'm gonna be shooting the lunar eclipse. And then I'm also going to talk about some of the settings I'm gonna be using. And then we're just gonna be hanging out here. We've got about an hour and a half left until totality. So it's gonna be a really fun time. I'm gonna show you guys, first of all, what I'm looking for in a composition. So I've been out to this arch uh, many times before, and so I knew that it faced the direction that the moon would be. The moon is gonna be somewhere up in here. Now, I don't know exactly where the moon is gonna be, but I do have a really cool way to see where it's going to be close. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to use the PhotoPills app on my phone, and I'm going to hit the night AR button on the bottom. Now that's going to bring up exactly where the moon is going to be. So now I've got it set maybe on the top left corner. You can see it's set for tonight at 10, 10 p.m., which is basically uh, when totality starts. Now I can see with the augmented reality where that moon is going to be and if I slide my finger, I can watch the moon move. So I can frame out my composition to get the moon in the perfect spot. So now you can see if I'm over here, the moon is gonna be slightly off to the right. You can actually see the moon is right here, right now. So really, really cool way to figure out where you want your composition to be. And this is something that I recommend using anytime you're out finding compositions where they need to be directionally faced. Now you might be wondering, what do I mean by directionally faced compositions? So in a shot like this, we know that the moon is gonna be in that direction, that's like southeast. So we have to find a composition that shoots well to the southeast. There's a lot of places where I could go and shoot compositions that shoot well to the west or to the north, but I need something that shoots to the southeast with, to get the moon in there, unless I wanna composite it, which in this case, I don't wanna composite it. I wanna actually get a real shot of this. So you always have to think about where you're going and exactly which direction your composition is facing it's really helpful to go back to a spot that you've been before that you've scouted out but it is of course possible to go to a spot that you haven't been you just need to get there a little bit early to do a little bit more planning and research ahead of time so I've actually got two cameras rolling here. I've got this one set up, which is gonna be my main composition, and I may move this over here. The augmented reality feature is just a way of figuring out roughly where you need to be at, but it's not a uh, end all. It's not exactly where the moon is gonna be because it is just te mobile technology, augmented reality. So I may move over here and get a little bit of this foreground action going on here. You can see we've got really, really nice lines here. Then my other camera is actually set up just behind my main camera over there. I've got the 70 to 300 on that camera. Camera. So with that camera, I'm just shooting the moon. I wanna get some nice shots of the moon, which has already came out a little bit. So I'm kind of doing a little dual wheeled, two cameras going here. And yeah, we're gonna sit it out. Uh, we need to wait a little bit for that moon to come up. So um, I will probably stop the video and we will catch you guys shortly once the moon is starting to come up. One last thing to think about when you're shooting a night photo, uh, and this goes for all night photos, not just moon shots, but you always like to have a little bit of subject, or at least me personally, I like to have a little bit of subject in the sky. This is because it contrasts really, really, really well. If everything I'm shooting is below the horizon, I'm not gonna get a good contrast and you're not gonna be able to see my subject really well because it's gonna get really dark. So think about how your composition changes in the dark versus in the light. So you can see my composition here. I've got the arch that actually goes up into the sky which is going to look really, really nice, especially with a little bit of moonlight hitting below it. It should really nicely balance the image. Okay, well, I have this light set up, so I'm totally blind right now. Uh, it's starting to get dark. So we want to make sure that we don't blow out the moon. Now, the moon is going to be pretty bright even during totality compared to the foreground. So the foreground you might normally shoot with a 10, 20, 30 second long exposure so that you can see the foreground. But when we're shooting the moon, we have to shoot a faster exposure because the moon is a lot brighter because it's emitting a little bit of light. We don't want to blow out the moon. Otherwise, we're just going to have a big red or white circle in our sky. So we will have to shoot a little faster shot speed for those of you with cheaper cameras that don't have as much dynamic range you can of course uh, bracket your shots so you can take one at a brighter exposure one at a darker exposure and then bridge the gap and put them together uh, i'm going to try and get it all in one shot we'll see what happens i'm kind of just waiting out here still waiting for the moon to come up we've got about an hour left until totality the moon is slowly coming up i'm taking pictures on my telephoto uh, lens right now on one of my other cameras and then i'm just kind of waiting and adjusting my composition ever so slightly back and forth to figure out exactly where I wanna be for this shot. All right, well, we've just about reached totality. You can see there's just a sliver left 
on that moon. And right now I'm really overexposing the shot. I really like the effect that this is creating. It's giving us kind of this red moon with this little sliver of light on the side. It looks really awesome. Now when you're shooting something like this, you wanna make sure that you are getting that focus point correct. Uh, the best way to do it is probably single shot autofocus with a small flexible spot. Move that flexible spot over and focus on the bright spot of the image. And then once you have the focus, you're going to flip it uh, back into manual and then take your shot. Now check this multiple times a night because if you don't, you will end up with all your photos will be blurry um, and focusing it just once is usually not gonna be enough. You can see it's looking really awesome. Loving the way that's looking. And if your autofocus isn't working, you can manual focus it, turn the ring and then zoom in. And this way is a little challenging to get it just right. But if your autofocus ring isn't working, that can be the way to go. So as soon as that last sliver is gone, we will be in totality where the moon will be really dark and it'll be really, really interesting to shoot it. So yeah, I'm gonna keep shooting here. Um, this is looking great. Like I said, this is my composition here with my camera that has the telephoto lens on it. Maybe I can turn on my light so you can see a little bit. Um, and then I've got my other camera over there where I will be shooting my wide angle composition. All right, guys, well, we're in totality now. You can't really see anything on my GoPro, but I'll show you guys the image here on the screen that I'm shooting right now. Uh, the moon is looking really, really nice. It's really dull, so we can actually take a little bit longer exposure and not overexpose it. So we're able to get our foreground a little bit light so that we will be able to bring it up in post-processing. It's looking really good. I think I'm shooting at about uh, 10 seconds here at f4 ISO 1600. Um, and I may actually go with a faster shutter speed. You don't want your shutter speed to be so long that the moon is trailing because we want our moon to be as sharp as absolutely possible. Um, and now on my foreground image, I'm shooting here at about uh, 40 millimeters, maybe 50 millimeters. That way I can get my moon a little bit large. If I'm shooting with like your traditional wide angle, 18 millimeters, the scene is gonna be so, so, so wide angle that you can't even see the moon. It's just gonna look like a big red star far away. So we wanna shoot zoomed in enough that we can actually see the moon a little bit. And I found a really nice composition where I'm able to back up and zoom in a little bit in order to see a little bit more. Now on my other camera over here, I'm shooting just a zoomed in 300 millimeter uh, and I've even used the crop sensor mode. So I'm at like 450 on this lens um, to actually see the moon as big as I possibly can. Looking back, I probably would have rented a longer lens, but I didn't. So I'm working with what I got. Uh, this is the benefit of having two cameras with you and two tripods. I carried them both out here. I can get a couple nice shots. I can get one of just the moon by itself, uh, which will look really nice. And then I can get a another one of the landscape itself. So I'm really enjoying getting both shots, bouncing back and forth between both cameras. And all in all, I think everything is looking really good so far. Now on this camera over here that I'm shooting all the way out at 300 with the crop on, I'm actually shooting a little bit faster exposure. I'm shooting at one second F8 and ISO 2500. The reason why I want a faster exposure is because I'm zoomed in more. So any movement from the moon is going to be amplified even further. So I need that faster shutter speed when you zoom in more. Think of it like the rule of 500s and night photography, um, you kind of have to do the same thing with the moon. You got to go faster exposure the further you're zoomed in. So it's going to be a little bit noisy, but I'm not that worried about it. I'll be able to clean up the noise just fine, I think. So I'm going to keep taking some shots and just kind of keep jumping around. I'm shooting lots of different compositions here. All of them are really, really interesting, and I'm just having a really good time out here. All righty, guys. Well, that is a wrap here on shooting the blood moon slash lunar eclipse. Really, really cool. Thing to come out here and shoot. It was definitely a lot darker than I expected it to be. Hopefully you picked up a few tips in this video for the next time there's a lunar eclipse and you guys can utilize some of these tips. I may make a video editing this shot as well, so maybe stay tuned for that. We'll see. I haven't quite decided yet, but yeah, it's looking really good. Hopefully that helps you guys and you can also see some of the different focal lengths that you can use to capture different um, moons, different sizes of the moon in your photo. Remember that if you go with a wide angle, you can capture a really cool foreground, but you might not be able to get the moon quite so well. Um, whereas if you go with a telephoto lens, it might be harder to capture the foreground, but you can get the moon a lot larger in your frame. If you guys have any questions about this video or anything I can help you guys with, please feel free to drop a comment down below. As always, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me to continue to make these videos for you guys. I wanna thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.